snow will fall from autumn until May. Minnesota, where the waving wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. Minnesota, every night, my honey lamb and I, every night we sit alone and spoon and watch a loon making lazy circles in the sky.
out. The poor and unlucky, the weak and the odd, I thought we all were the children of God. You're not the droid I'm looking for. But I don't know how to quit you. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose we could probably split it into two things and talk about our rehearsals and also just kind of audio production if we start there. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, deal. So yeah. that evolution of rehearsals and how it started with, first it was just purely the Facebook style presentation from Tim, then into the full collaborative Zoom base, but still mm -hmm. online only. And then finally recently into this weird hybrid of an outside in-person rehearsal still with an online component. I think it's been definitely an adventure of it's watching crazy. it happen. But I remember, I, I remember that moment last year of pandemic hits and it was, can we even do this? And that's where you and I started talking last year. Okay, well, how do we even start this? And we started the conversation from a chamber yeah. perspective, and yeah. they had been working on. Let's test it out. And, and what was the song? I, mm, it's called "Behold," right? By uh, John Michael Trotta. Right, and they yeah. had been rehearsing that already. Yeah, they knew it really well. So they had been rehearsing in person. All I needed them to, and they knew it. They already knew it. They were they performed it a lot. Right. I was so like, we had that lay down these tracks. Right, and we had that conversation with. Okay, we're going to try this. Here's what we right. need you to do. So we put together the guide track, the the messages and the chats and the content that I got back from them. It's a, it's a, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. This is miserable. I can't <laughs> I can't get my I can't get more angry than I am right now at this process because of the number of takes. Literally, um, we're asking people to do us and the singers, everybody do something you've never done before yeah. and do it really well. And do it all by yourself yeah. with no support of Gerald in the room, yeah. other singers, it's just by yourself singing to this video. And they did it and they sent it in. And then it came to me because we had uploaded to Dropbox and send us what you got. And yeah. so I- You were literally like the audio junkyard. Everyone takes the files <laughs> that they're embarrassed yeah. for their guests to see, puts them in the trash bag and sends it to you. Exactly, so I collected the files <laughs> and I distinctly remember that Saturday afternoon then when I took the files and I assembled them in Adobe Audition, is the software that I was using for it, and I stacked up the audio of it, and I aligned it based on the waveforms, and I got them all lined up, and I hit play. And after 10 seconds, I lost it. I was full tears, because it was that moment when you realized that, oh my God, this could work. It was just like, you remember when we first started editing audio for the full chorus? Oh yeah. But Jesus, I mean, so, it's I, painful I'm, and it's painful it's drudgery and, I, and, and I'm yeah. picky about the chorus and so I also learned through the pandemic let's not be as picky as we thought we were just so we have time to do like life right yeah I mean now I, I create <laughs> crescendo sometimes where the chorus just can't make them because they're not singing together right and I think about what those shapes look like in the audio line yeah and it's become an artistic thing and now I think I have had the chance to conduct a little bit in our rehearsals and in my church choir. I see those lines as I'm conducting now in my head. It's really weird. I hope they go away. But I think that there's some things that... But it's a different way to visualize There's the a different sound. way to visualize it, right? And mm -hmm. for some learners, maybe that's a helpful way to think about it. And I think there's some aspects of this mode that we'll want to keep when we return in the fall to, you know, in-person rehearsals and performances. We've just, we've reached so many people through this mode that we never would have reached before. Um, and people that were able to engage in our process that weren't able to engage before. So I think I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm excited for us to maybe create a video every concert and send it out and say, hey, look what we're doing. You weren't able to come to a concert, but this is the type of thing we're doing, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome to the nerds. Oof. We welcome you with open nerds. arms. Nerds. Mm -hmm. Nerds. Yeah. <laughs>
In a world where physical contact was forbidden for like ever, everything is about to change. Did you hear? They lifted the mandate. What does that mean? Get in, losers. We're going shopping. This summer, don't miss the moves. Bend. And snap. The friendships. Just save you! Tonight. The awkwardness. Face it, Bear. You're a virgin who can't drive. And the one thing you've been waiting over one year to experience. I wish I knew how to quit you. Bear Hug, coming soon to a dealership near you. Some hugging and some squeezing and some mugging and some teasing and some leaping and some chasing and some leaping and some 
want some kissing and some hoping and some missing and some hoping and some stuff like that there. I want some beeping and some chasing and some leaping and some racing and some stuff like that there. And when I get a certain feeling, I can press it. There's really only one expression to express it. I want some hugging. Hi, it's U.S. Senator Tina Smith, and I am honored to join your throngs of admirers in helping you celebrate your 40th anniversary. The Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus has been living your mission of gay men building community through music for 40 years. It's hard to believe that 40 years ago, you started during the HIV AIDS epidemic, and you created a space and a place for grieving and for organizing and offering a beacon of hope during some really dark times. 40 years later, you continued your incredible creativity during the COVID-19 pandemic, rehearsing virtually and offering incredible concerts virtually to your, all of your admirers. So I wanna thank you also for being a leader in the fight for gay marriage, for racial equity, and against transphobia. Again, you have been leading the way. Congratulations to Dr. Gers and all of your past directors, to your members and alumni and donors, and of course your audience. And thank you, Twin Cities Gay Men Chorus, for filling our hearts with joy for all of these years. And now, from our sponsors at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, a brief intermission to get the blood flowing. Let's all get on our feet and just follow what you see. Thanks for joining us for the final virtual concert of our 40th season. Now I wanna tell you about our 41st season, the music of living. So a good friend and I were talking the other day and he said, you know, if we made it through this pandemic and all we wanted to do was return to normal, then we missed the point. So to that, this next season will not be normal. It'll be spectacular. There'll be some things that you love, that you expect from us, and there'll be some fantastic, wonderful new things that we're gonna bring into the season. Lots of new music and some new spaces. Our season begins with There Will Be Light, a holiday show that just celebrates the coming out of the darkness that was the pandemic and stepping into the light of live choral singing with a live audience and experiencing that together. Of course, we will bring in some new commissions, like we said. This concert will feature a brand new work by Kim Andre Arneson. In fact, it's his first ever tenor bass chorus piece. And then we will be in the fabulous Landmark Center in downtown St. Paul, which is also new. Our spring concert is called When I Rise. And you can expect tons of commissions that you've never heard that we were prepared to sing for you in spring of 2020, but we're going to present them now to you in spring of 2022. In addition to that, we're presenting a brand new commission by Alan Shorter, composer of Oliver Button is a Sissy, in memory of our former singer, Chris Mellon. And that concert will be in the glorious sanctuary of Westwood Lutheran Church. Finally, we return to Ted Mann Concert Hall with a Broadway theme. It's called Avenue Queer. This concert is a really fun show for Pride of 2022. Thank you for joining us this past season for all of our virtual concerts but we're really excited to see you in person for the 41st season. Enjoy the rest of the show.
I can't believe Patrick is late again. Patrick, come on, let's go. Ugh, it's literally 95 degrees outside and you made me put on this stupid Wookiee costume. Oh, did you not get the email? No, what email? Uh, we changed direction of the concert again and okay, we're not roll, doing roll the Star Wars. Well, as you can see, production has definitely been a journey this year. Yeah, and we've learned a lot along the way. Um, we worked really hard to make sure that this chorus would be safe and everything that we did following every state mandate that we had uh, as we went along. If you joined us for our Christmas concert, you got to see Christmas cheer. And let me tell you, that choreography changed weekly. We were outside in a park rehearsing. We were doing everything that we could to give you the same TCGMC that you've grown to know and love, but in a safe, COVID-friendly manner. So Gerald will give us the song and then give us Gerald's concept and then we put it through what we like to call the metric process and so we have to kind of look at COVID regulations look at membership engagement and figure out how we can take a song and make it visually appealing because one of the things that's really challenging too is like well challenge it's a blessing and a curse because we're all really creative people but the nice thing about this team that came together is we're all really able to balance one another out in different kinds of ways we can say we learned a lot about one another. We learned a lot about Microsoft Teams this year, and we've learned really what our community is capable of and is willing to do and not do. I think one of the things that has happened every concert that we've done is um, we'll go into this and, and it's a really frustrating, and as a singer, it's a frustrating process where you're trying to learn over Zoom and then you have to sing by yourself into your cell phone. And so everything that we've done is literally a solo and it's a very um, exposing kind of uh, experience. And what's really fun at the end though is getting to sit at home and watch the concert with your family and basically just ball because it's so beautiful, even though it's totally different. It's been really nice because now we Normally for a concert for us, we're on stage so we don't get to see it. So that has been a nice thing I think about this season is we get to sit with, with our families right alongside them and enjoy each concert this season. And it's been fun from a production standpoint to sit next to your family and your loved ones and be like, I did this, I was part of creating this beautiful thing. And just knowing 
the span of reach that we've gotten this year, you know, we're outside the Twin Cities. We're worldwide that we are getting views now. So it's been really great to bring the mission of TCGMC to that level. I would say too that now that we're on the other side of this, you know, having to figure out how to like, you didn't sign up to be part of a COVID year, but you were, you're not going to step down just because it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. You're going to help get the organization through it. But I will say that next year, I'm looking forward to our more traditional like term, terms of creativity of like, you know, what is a production number on stage versus what is this music video concept that we had to come up with for everything that we've done all year. So I moved to the Twin Cities on March 23rd last year. The, the timing was like, you know, that was days after everything shut down. And I had on my calendar the April auditions for the chorus and then the world fell apart. So then I ended up auditioning for the fall virtual season. I was very, very excited at the opportunity. And then I auditioned and was lower baritone, which as a trans person who started as a mezzo-soprano five years ago, um, was pretty exciting to be placed as a lower baritone. But then I ended up getting very, very sick and in the hospital for a while, and I had to take a leave of absence, my very, very first concert prep period. And despite being brand new to the chorus and despite, you know, not having ever sung with the chorus, I was just treated like family. I am family. And I discovered what so many people have already said that, you know, the chorus is more than just a place to come sing once a week and then perform every few months. Like, we're a family and I've had some really, really awesome connections and help come when I've needed it from various, various chorus members. And it's just fantastic. When I think of authenticity, I have struggled with that for a really long time uh, in my whole life, uh, being my authentic self. And I think the chorus has really helped bring the parts of me and my gender identity out because I get to be with a group of people who are so accepting, so willing to be here and meet me where I'm at. And that, I, I, that is something I struggled with when I came out a long time ago, but is having queer friends. I didn't know how to make platonic connections with people. And I think the chorus is such a great place to do just that, make a community. What started keeping me coming back is that number one, no matter how I'm feeling, I can count on the chorus for a smile. No matter what kind of week I've had, no matter what kind of day I've had, and there have been some doozies, I can count on coming to rehearsal, be it virtual or in person, and I can leave with a smile. There are people around me that genuinely and deeply care about me because they know my story, and we are all sharing our stories in song. Everyone here loves music as much or more than I do. Music has always been my first love. It's always been the thing that I will always cling to. It's the thing that can make me happy. It can make me sad. And so on the days that I get to come to chorus, I get to just be me because I have people around me that understand that part of me. Hi, I'm Timothy Dupre. And while the chorus is in its 40th season, I am celebrating my 30th anniversary with the chorus as the principal accompanist. It's a shame that this pandemic happened during this critical time for the chorus, but it didn't stop us. We kept our music going. The work of the board of directors, the staff, the chorus members, countless volunteers have enabled us to continue to fulfill our mission of creating community through music. And tonight, I have the privilege of asking you for continued support. Any amount will help us. You can do this by texting uh, TCGMC at 43211 or the website tcgmc.org slash donate or on Venmo at TCGMC. And on behalf of the chorus, I'd like to thank you for your continued support. Please enjoy the rest of the concert and I look forward to seeing you next year in person. Here in the dark, I stand before you, knowing this 
is my chance to show you my heart. This is the start. This is the start. I have so much to say, and I'm hoping that your arms are open. Don't turn away. I need you near me. Congratulations to the Twin Cities Gay Men's Chorus on 40 years of enriching the arts and culture of the Minneapolis and St. Paul communities. Your anniversary concert is a wonderful way to celebrate Pride Month. I also want to congratulate Tim Dupre on 30 years of service as the chorus's principal accompanist. After such a difficult year, we are finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, or as the Duluth mayor likes to see, the lighthouse on the horizon. And we have much to look forward to and to sing about. 
One of them is the return of live performances when the chorus begins its 41st season in December. Your mission of eliminating homophobia and intolerance through raising your voices together in beautiful song is a true gift to all of us. Your support of the LGBTQ community inspires my work in the Senate as I fight for justice for all those facing intolerance and discrimination. Let's get the Equality Act done. Congratulations again, and thank you for four decades of artistic excellence. I mean, this, this started in the spring. The whole pandemic started in, in, in March, as far as, I mean, as far as like people, hey, Friday the 13th in March was no more school. Yeah. Our, our kids were not going back to school anymore. Uh, I wasn't going back to work. A lot of other people weren't going back to work. And so we, we were like, what are we going to do for our spring concert? Which just got Which just got canceled. canceled. And then we were thinking, what do we do for summer? What can we do anything yeah. for this for this season? Yeah. And that that's where it started. And we did walk hand in hand to do something mm -hmm. for for the summer concert. I mean, I really liked doing the interviews for walk hand in hand. Those are some of my favorite pieces, like starting out, just being able to connect with people during the pandemic and just have them like tell their stories was a fun thing to do that is kind of part of the course's DNA. And I think for like Holiday Hot Dish, there was a lot of production elements that we had to very quickly, because uh, restrictions <laughs> were changing by the day. And so we had this whole plan to film all our stuff over the course of two or three weeks, and then restrictions changed overnight. And we had to do everything in one day. Uh, with editing especially, I, I feel a little bit more comfortable and then was fortunate enough to meet Maxwell, who is a professional, knows what he's doing, and I've learned a lot uh, from you and, and you know, texting you at two in the morning and three in the morning and four in the morning or whatever as, as we're approaching a concert and different deadlines. And then we started with Holiday Hot Dish, and that was really kind of, okay, this is what we're gonna do for an entire season. And now there's a group of us trying to put something together and to your point, things were changing, whether it's restrictions or we thought of an idea or, hey, this is an even better idea. But then it got to the point where you're receiving film, right? Like two weeks or so before the concert and then not sleeping. Oh, the week of. <laughs> the I week still, of even. I was getting footage the week of yeah. the concert. Yeah. Video production is a lot of work and it's not something the chorus does. I think they're very comfortable putting together like a stage production and arranging, um, you know, people and sets and musicians for a live performance. I think video, it's a similar art, but it's very different at the same time. It's its own thing, it has its own workflow. It's much less um, <laughs> rigid. Um, it's just different. So I think I just saw an opportunity to get back to the chorus. I think I've been trying to in ways like, Whatever you do, there's gonna be people supporting you is not like a base that a lot of queer people have inherently. Like, you know, whatever we produced, whatever, like I have very high standards for myself, but I knew whatever we put out, people are gonna to respond to and love. Like at the end of the day, it didn't have to be perfect. They just wanted something they could get behind and feel connected and be a part of. And so I think I just wanted to keep that space out there. And so for me, this was a really um, great opportunity to use the skills that I have to help create that space for people so they can still have um, that connection in a time when connection was really hard to make. Being able to still facilitate that creation of something that we did together as a chorus and a group and a family. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was something I tried to bring into all the concerts too, was that. Hey Luke, something big is a T-Rex cookie. Well, what is it? Hi friends. 
the T-Rex Cookie Food Truck is available for special events. Just send an email to foodtruck at trxcookie.com. And don't forget to visit our Egan and Ridgedale Mall locations or pick up frozen dough at your local Kowalski's and Hy-Vee grocery stores. starched collar and my high top shoes and my hair piled high upon my head I went to lose a jolly hour on the trolley and lost my heart instead with his light brown derby and his bright green tie he was quite the handsomest of men I started to yen so I counted to ten then I counted to ten Again. And the trolley is clang, 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 went the trolley. Ding, 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 went the pen. Ding, 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 zing, 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 went my heartstrings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. She fell, she fell. Chug, 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 went the motor. Bump, 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 went the Smiled, I could feel the car shake. Like a free so quick, he tipped his hat and took a seat. He said, I hoped I hadn't stepped upon your feet. He asked my name, oh, I held my breath. Oh, I couldn't speak. She was frightened half to death. Well, I was. Yes, she was. Buzz, 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 buzz went the buzzer. Buzz. Plop, plop, plop went the wheel. Stop, stop when my heart streaks. As he started to leave, she took hold of his sleeve with her hand. I took hold of his hand. And as if it were planned. And as if it were planned. He stayed on with me and it was grand just to stand with his hand holding mine. 